Hello! Um, got a really cool video coming up this morning. This is something that's been on the back burner for a long, long time. I've been so busy with setting up Driftwood, the reclaim business, and just trying to do all these other external things. The weather's turned, and typically for me, we've now got a list of jobs here domestically that I really, really got to get on. So, this is one of them today. We're in my glorious bathroom today, and this is the area I'm concentrating on. In that white box is my batteries and all the power storage, which I'll show you in a minute. That wood burner has been in here since we first came on the site. So it's when we first got here in, in, in trailers, we put the shed up, converted it to a bathroom, and this wood burner was a lifesaver. But since I've installed a diesel burner in here as an auxiliary heat source, it's sort of become a bit redundant. And it's leaking, so around the chimney there. So I've got to do some external stuff to this building anyway. So this is all going to come out because the thing that is coming today is going to supersede this. Okay, I'm going to keep the technical stuff down to a minimum because gets a bit boring but it's a basic 12 volt system everything from the solar and the wind comes into this unit here consumer unit and this unit here this box is basically full of big resistors and the same here these blue bars are resistors they're in there for the fact that at the minute we've got 12.4 volts coming into the coming into the charge system this here is the power bank so we've got 710 amp hour batteries in here and this stores all our power for the usage for the whole place and the problem i'm having at the minute is that basically we produce more power than i can use but typically with wind and solar that doesn't happen all the time so today we've got no problems it's got the standard 12.4 which is what this system runs at most of the time but in summer or when it's very windy we produce tons and tons of power and with this consumer unit what happens is the power builds up in this in this in these resistors in the box and then this this system here and it's got a cut out so it cuts in cuts out and pumps the excess power into this resistor this gets quite hot so we've installed these little fans in here that click in and click out so in the height of summer when we're producing a hell of a lot of power the, or you constantly get this clicking sound which is clicking in and out and in and out and these fans are going off and on off and on sometimes even throughout the night and it's just got really really annoying so that's my rubbish technical explanation over with <laughs> we're gonna remove the wood burner clear this space and then we're gonna install my super duper new project um, something that I've been quite excited about uh, it's, um, it's a really simple way to use your excess power but I think it's gonna be really effective here so yeah keep watching that right let's pull this out I don't think it's gonna take a lot of doing people that's what happens if you let your chimney leak or you're not using your burner regularly and even if the chimney sealed really well you get damp coming down the inside and outside of the flue and that's completely rotted that out so that should be sealed onto this it's an easy repair but it's still another thing to do so probably just as well we're taking this out that's that clear surprising amount of space there might have to varnish that wall so this is it the big news now to the untrained eye you'd think this is just an old oil filled radiator or an old radiator and it is but what makes this one different is these on the bottom now we have salvaged these out of a 12 volt fridge 
so we've got two of them in there they're 75 or 100 watt sorry um heaters from the fridge which have been soldered into the bottom of the radiator little fill and point there which will be left open so if the water gets ridiculously hot which we don't but be a safety valve on the top so we've been removing this whole unit these resistors will come out of here so rather than the load dump going into this part of the resistors it will go straight in to the radiator and heat that up so the basic installation's done, that's on. We have left the resistors in place but disconnected them. We're just now waiting for the power to build up, which we're at 14.2, so should any second now click out into that and we'll just run a meter on to see if that is powering up. And when I put my hand on here, this is quite quite warm so it's already starting to heat up the rail I think that'll take quite a lot we think about probably half an hour constant um, power to heat this up but it's only supposed to just work as a as an overspill basically um, and winter time I'm gonna put one of these over the other side where it's not heated over there so that will just keep out all the damp and um, and just keep things running uh, keep things a little bit nicer over there as well but it's definitely working cool so that's a win I think um, that's in, it's working it's it's taken it's taken the power and it's heating up quite nicely so yeah if anyone wants any advice about these just message me on the on the youtube or on the facebook um or if they want one made message me and i'll sort it out for you anyway thanks for watching the video subscribe and uh we'll catch you on the next one take care